Good day, this is Sean Foster from BIG. Um, this is a introduction to business strategy, a classroom session that we had in our big group quite some time ago. Part one of the strategy, strategy classroom is largely about an overview of what business strategy is and how it fits into creating a great business. When I discuss business strategy with business owners, especially with the SME sector that I'm working with, mostly they shake their head in approval for the need to have one but have never actually created one. And I obviously ask myself why. The conclusion I've come to find is that either they do not have enough time to create one, or two, the importance of creating a formal business strategy is not high enough up on their priority list. After all, they do have a plan in their heads. And number three, they simply don't know how to create one. Hopefully, I can address all three of these points. I must firstly apologize for putting this quote up. I really do like it, but I forget where I actually found it, so I can't reference who actually wrote it. Um, but what it does do, it emphasizes as to why you are here listening to me rambling on. And if your mind is not open to being curious, then continuing further with this presentation or even embarking on developing a great business strategy may be a waste of time for you. Being curious is a lifelong trait that you should embrace and nurture. It is important to take a moment out and to first acknowledge this need and secondly to ensure that you keep this habit alive so that you are constantly open to learning and improving. So this is a depiction of a typical uh, business life cycle. Obviously the bottom axis is years and then what we find is we've got three different stages there. One is what I call mass or medium small to medium sized enterprises even smaller corporations um, that dominates the market then we've got um, referring back to i think terminology uh, by Vern harnish gazelles or if you come from south africa springboks which are the rapidly overnight successes the rapidly rising companies and then we've got some giants or elephants well the reality is 96% of all businesses are out there operating within this mass field. In itself, that's not a problem. It is just a reality of there can only be so many players at the top and the majority of the players are below that. And how big are you within the fish pond that you operate in? Mostly, when you come across overnight successes, they were masked before, even the elephants. Overnight successes generally take 20 years or more before they have this overnight success. To give some examples, you take Apple, they established in 1976. In 2001, that's 25 years later, they released the iPod, they had 9,600 employees. In 2013, that's 37 years since the establishment, they had 80,000 employees and the largest, largest market capitalization of any business in the world. Starbucks, established in 1971, in 1991, or 20 years later, they had 100 stores. Well, that's a pretty good achievement. Then you look at 1996, it's only five years later, they had 1,000 stores, and in 2014, 43 years since establishment, 18,000 stores in 62 countries and 150,000 staff. So those are phenomenal successes, but they really only hit their stride after about 20 years. What happens to the elephants? So typical of some well-known elephants here, Axon Mobile, Freddie May, Toys R Us, R Us they, I mean, they operated in New Zealand as well, Pan Am, Borders, again, a local one, General Motors and Kodak. General Motors, as you can take an example, they were established about 110 years ago. Um, they dominated the motor industry for decades and decades and decades. In 2009, during the GFC, they were declared bankrupt. And they only exist today because of a massive, I think it was a $13 billion bailout by the uh, US government, who also took a major shareholding into the company. So the question is, how can we scale our businesses and avoid becoming an elephant? How do we become gazelles within our own fish ponds? So the next point is, how do we go about creating a great business that allows us to scale. The one thing is we need to continue to assess where we are making and losing money in our business. So I have a model that I'll be going through just now to show you how that actually works. The second thing is we're needing to tap into our inner core ideology 
the who we are by wrapping a great business strategy around our culture that allows us to actually deliver. Well, this is the model I was referring to. Um, I've developed it and it's called the ADD model. As a business advisor and coach, it is my mission to always ensure that I'm doing the most I can possibly to ensure that both you and your business are doing as well as you possibly can. I make no apology that my ambition, which needs to be your ambition, if not already, is for you to create a great business, not another run-of-the-mill look-alike business. A business allows you to earn the income that you are dreaming of, to support you in realizing your personal ambitions that you have in life, and it allows the business to scale so you can create a real financial asset for you. This is a premise of the ADD model that makes up for great business. We also know that with any business, money is made or lost in one of the three main areas. The one is the design. This has to do how your business is structured and running from a financial perspective. The second part is the delivery. This is all about the human side of the business. How are you and your team actually delivering? Every business is no business unless they have empowered, engaged, high-performing people on board. This is where the rubber hits the road. Without the human factor, you have no business. Every business needs to ensure that you get the most out of every single person working in, on, and alongside the business. The third part is the attraction. This is a third portion. Interestingly, the general go-to for 80% of businesses. When something is not right, we fix it by working on the track side of the business, which is the overall sales and marketing efforts. In reality, for 80% of businesses, they need to work in other areas like design and delivery before putting more resources into the track side of the business. We do not have a business, we do have a, sorry, we do have a business health exercise, health check exercise, that will help you identify how you are performing in these different parts of your business. If you have not completed this yet, then please message me and I'll show you where that's uh, survey is. As a business owner, you are by default responsible for the health and well-being of both the business and the staff. The following are four fundamental pr principles that you should be focusing on in terms of developing your business and are essential if you intend developing a great business. Number one is you need to lead both yourself and your team. By default, you are all doing this now to some extent. That is why you're in business. But your challenge is to be better than anybody else and every competing business out there. Some pointers include, number one, setting a handful of rules. This must tie back to your overall values. Number two, your messaging needs to be repeated ad nauseum. This is your messaging around who the company really is, what it stands for, your purpose, your values, your ambitions and what we need to do to get there. We need to be 100% consistent. One of the surest ways of destroying trust, enthusiasm, and commitment is through the, the inconsistency of your actions and words. And this applies to your staff and your customers. Specifically, when we look at business strategy, it is the values, the visions for the future and the overall purpose that we are tapping into here. So why do so few companies have a formal strategy? The same reason why 96% of the companies are mass and most don't last longer than a few years. When I ask business owners if they have a strategy, most will say, yes, they do. That's their first response. The reality is that most business have an intention and a plan in their head of how to get there and what they want, but that is not a formal documented. And if you ask employees, most will have no idea on the strategy or be very unclear on the long-term ambitions of the business. Unless your entire team has bought into your well thought through strategy, it becomes nearly impossible to direct all of the energies towards a singular outcome. Companies with a great, well executed strategy laser focus their efforts towards a common goal and outcome. These two aspects that I've just shown over here should guide you through your strategy development. Unless you have them, you don't really have an effective strategy. The components of your strategy only really matter if it matters to your customers. And number two, the strategy needs to differentiate you from your competition. We have developed the um, acronym of SOAP, which is Strategy on a Page, which we will be covering as we go through. The third fundamental you have to get right, execute your strategy. 
There is a lot of science that supports the notion that focusing on more than three things at once becomes exponentially more difficult. It is the same with goal setting and the setting in place a great strategy. So the number one rule is identifying fewer rather than many priorities. Ideally three to five is the maximum. These are not what we're referring to as a daily task. This is about minimizing the number of key strategic initiatives that you work on. The more you have, the more your efforts are diluted. Number two, make sure that your efforts and goals that are set in place are measurable. The more lofty they are, the easier it becomes to come up with an excuse for non-delivery. Well set up systems should be given, giving you frequent feed, feedback by the data they produce. Saying, it is very well quoted out there, what you measure gets the attention is really valid. Number three, the rhythm of the business is like, a, like the heartbeat. Is it consistent, inconsistent, slow or fast? We will cover this a lot more in a later stage, but in a nutshell, if you are more than a one person operation, setting in place an effective meeting rhythm will work wonders for your business. And especially now if you are one, uh, man band, one person band, it's really important that you have somebody outside of your business that's helping you keep your own heartbeat from the business ticking like it should be. And particularly here, we're talking about setting up your KPIs and your OPOs that we'll be discussing shortly. The fourth fundamental, and one that often seems a little disjoint from the previous three, is cash flow. Poor cash flow is the number one killer of businesses of all sizes and stages. It doesn't matter whether you're a mask, a gazelle, or an elephant. Understanding and reporting on the cash flow is critical in your risk mitigation. Two handy rules regarding cash flow include simply never running out. In reality, for most business, this, this does often happen, and they success, successfully traverse this period by the expense of extreme stress and vulnerability. Unfortunately, the cash flow problems are often cumulative as well. If you have faced periods of having no cash in your business, then this certainly will resonate with you. Secondly, let everyone, let every one of your decisions have a checkbox regarding cash flow. Does this decision have a positive or negative effect on cash flow? How or what can I do differently to better mitigate the negative effects of cash flow? In particular here, again, we'll be talking about our KPIs, KPRs and OPAs in terms of how they affect cash flow. This graph is another way of presenting the typical journey from now until, well, that long-term goal commonly referred to as the BHAG or the Big Hairy Audacious Goal. Progress is never linear, but rather made up of peaks and troughs. Over the next 30 to 90 days, is where you're taking uh, deliberate action within your business and it's littered with obviously tasks that you're doing from day to day. You have great clarity about what the next 90 days looks like. There is little uncertainty about the external factors and as long as you set up clear objectives within a short period of time, you can measure the success and determine if you're indeed needing to realign. We manage our 90 day periods by implementing our OPAs, which stands for your outcomes, projects and activities. After 90 days, it becomes increasingly uncertain. We set up clear targets that we would like to achieve in maybe one year or three years, and these will be reviewed at least annually. But it is the 90 day plans that chunk these periods down into about sizable chunks to ensure that we are consistently working on the areas that really matter for the long term success of the business. As a leader, you need to keep everyone focused on the summit, your BHAG. During periods of struggle, those troughs, we need to dig deep and ensure that we're sticking to our overall purpose and remaining true to our values. Great companies have a remarkable history of consistency and sticking to the driving purpose and values. Goal setting is not a natural habit for most of us, even for me. It is very much an exercise rather than a natural habit. But without setting meaningful goals, it becomes almost impossible to achieve outcomes that are greater than the past or involve the team in a singular direction. There are two parts to a great strategy. Number one is the development of the strategy. But without part two, that is the execution of the strategy, it is worthless. So the question is, what is execution of your strategy really about? 
It is about getting everyone on your team working together to a common set of goals. A common path leading to a shared outcome that everyone is energized by. As a leader, you need to have very clear vision of where the business is heading and a high level of discipline demonstrated through the behaviors and habits that you set and live by. I have found that most SMEs, in fact most many corporates as well, don't have enough or regular productive meetings. And this is either because they don't have time to do them, they see each other all day, or they are just not sure how to structure meet meetings so that they are productive rather than just another meeting. Without formal meetings, you cannot create peer pressure, get collective intelligence, have clear communication, have the opportunity to refocus everyone on the one thing that everyone should be focusing on. Depending on exactly how your business is structured, the following is a useful format to follow when structuring, structuring your meeting rhythms. So there we like to have a daily huddle, which is really a 5 to 15 minute stand around quick update of what we're doing um, on the day and what are the learnings we had from the day before. Weekly meetings that's together pretty much the same as the daily huddle, but it's a summary of the week and what we're trying to achieve for the week and what we had in terms of learnings from the week before. Monthly reviews. This is obviously in our combination of uh, operational and also st uh, strategic and also feedback from a financial point of view in terms of how we are doing and according to our budget and how we're going in terms of long longer term goals. Quarterly reviews, this would be a summation of the 90 day plans uh, that have been developed by everybody within your company and really uh, yearly reviews which often can take one to eight hours in a day and it's very much strategically aligned. Creating a strategy is not a mystery exercise, rather it is a deliberate action. It clearly sets in place predetermined stretch targets that allow your business to both differentiate and to add value to your customers. Rather than having a multi-page business plan that sits in a desk drawer somewhere, your strategy should be articulated on a single sheet of paper, hence the name strategy on a page or SOAP. De de developing your strategy is about firstly reflection, as you want to tap into who you are as a business. Where does your energy come from? What motivates you to stretch hard and further in creating a meaningful impact that absolutely resonates with your purpose? Strategy is not about creating an amazing wish list. Secondly, being authentic is, similar, is a similar emotion. If you are not true to yourself, what will happen is that you will easily move off the path as soon as another shiny object appears. And when the going gets tough, and it always does, you will change your motives to suit the path of least resistance. Being authentic is where your true energy lies. Lastly, the internet is awash with information and solutions. You have free access to an unlimited amount of help. This can be either say, paid help or voluntary help. So why then do so many businesses struggle to navigate either the difficult periods or to, to, to achieve success beyond being a mouse, a mouse among millions of other mice? I think it is about developing the skills and habit of asking the right questions, both to your team and to that monkey voice that lies on each one of our heads. Effective, effective strategy creation drills into asking the right questions. This over here is just to give you a sample, a quick snapshot of what a strategy on a page looks like. Uh, there are eight parts to it, and it includes your 90 day plans at the bottom. So that was a framing exercise of business strategy. What's next? Well, it's up to you to start creating and fine tuning your own business strategy so that you are on the path to creating a great business. One that both differentiates you and adds value to both you and your customers.